Today we're going to look at uh, the final new lesson of Chapter 2, and that is more with proofs. You'll notice in the book, if you're reading through the book and you're reading through the notebook, that there's going to be a lot of talk about something called flowchart proofs. Um, I'm not going to be teaching that technique. You are certainly welcome to look at it and uh, to analyze it, and if there's something in there you like, uh, we can certainly talk about it individually. But um, I'm sticking with two column proofs. It's nice just to focus on one method and, and stick with that. I think two column is the way it's been done for a long time. It's a perfectly good way of doing it. We don't need to confuse you by teaching other techniques. So we're going to stick with the two column proofs, but uh, if you want to look at that flow or paragraph style, by all means, uh, take a look at that. So anyway, what we're looking at today is we have our, uh, an example proof of the congruent supplements theorem. Um, and we talked through this and we've looked at it, but now we're going to formally prove it. And it, it's pretty straightforward. You notice we start with, like all proofs, with our givens and what we're trying to prove, and as, long as, as well as a diagram of what's going on. So we're given that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. All right, so we can see that. Angle 1 and angle 2, and angle 2 and angle 3 are also supplementary. We want to prove angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So what do we start with? I'm just going to walk through this proof as an example. We start angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, angle 3 and angle 2 are supplementary. That is a given because those are given statements. You'll notice we had two given statements. We actually stated them both in the same line. They could be stated on the same line. They could be stated as separate lines. Since they're really saying the same thing, we generally would do it on the same line. Same with step two. What did we do? We look and we notice we have a vocabulary term here. What does that vocabulary term mean? You've heard me say this almost every time we do a proof now. Gee, we use a vocabulary term. Let's use a definition of that vocabulary term to draw some sort of conclusion. Supplementary means the angles add up to 180. So then we go one plus so angle 2 equals 180, and angle 3 plus angle 2 equals 180. It follows. Next, since both angles are equal to 180, that means they are equal to each other. So I'm going to rewrite this m angle 1 plus m angle 2 equals 180, which is m angle 3 plus m angle 2. And here they use transitive property here, um, and that's okay, uh, but I'm going to rewrite this instead of substitution. Technically, uh, that's, I would consider that an error to say transitive property there because this is A to C, B to C. It's not, um, it's not A to B, B to C. It's not quite written in transitive form. So I would have called that substitution, not transitive. Um, generally, you can use substitution wherever transitive would come in, but you can't always use transitive wherever substitution would be in. So if you're not sure which one it is, go with substitution. You won't be wrong. Then what do they do? They subtracted an M angle 2 from each side since it was the same on each side, positive M angle 2. They subtracted that away from each side, so the subtraction property. So we wound up with M angle 1 equals M angle 3. And what do we see several times already? If two things have the same measure, it means they're congruent. That's the definition of congruent. And there's our proof. Now, once again, this isn't the only way you could have done this. You certainly could have broken up step 1 into two steps. Step 2 into two steps wound up with up to seven steps here. That would have worked. Um, but this is our proof. And again, it's just walking through logically and deductive reasoning what's going on. Um, basically, this next one is a, you write a two-column proof of vertical angles congruence theorem. We aren't, we don't, we aren't given a paragraph proof. We're just going to go ahead and write a two-column proof. So we're going to prove angle 5 and angle 7 are vertical angles and then prove that they're congruent without actually using, we can't use the vertical angles congruence theorem because that's what we're proving. So what do we do? 
So angle five and angle seven are vertical angles. That's our given. This is a little bit of an odd proof just because that's probably not where you'd normally start this, but that's okay. Um, angle five and angle seven are vertical angles, that's true. Now, angle five is con and angle six are what type of pair? Well, we, they've got a couple names for that. We could call it a linear pair, or we could call it just supplementary angles. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you're gonna see very quickly why I'm gonna choose to use supplementary angles. So I'm gonna say step two, angle five and angle six are supplementary. Okay, and that's by that's basically given by the picture. And angle six and angle seven are supplementary. Those are given facts in the picture. Well, if five and six are supplementary and six and seven are supplementary, what did we just prove on the previous page? That two angles that are supplementary to the same angle must be not supplementary, but congruent. Angle five is congruent to angle seven by the congruent supplements Theorem. What did we just do? We just used a theorem that's previously been proven to shortcut a whole lot of steps. I don't have to go, oh, measure of angle five plus a measure, measure of angle six is 180. Measure of angle six plus measure of angle seven is 180. And then do the substitutions. We don't have to do all those steps we did back here because they're already done for us. We've already proven that. So now we can use that fact to go ahead and shortcut our next theorem and we've proven that vertical angles are congruent. Just like that. Very straightforward. Another proof, this one's a fill in the blank, two column proof. Given AB equals DE and BC equals CD, notice that those things are indicated in the picture. Prove that AC is congruent to CE. And again, let's walk through this. And again, these are, we're walking through these so you can see examples of proofs and see, that the way, see the way that they work. So as you wind up doing them on your own, that you start going, oh, I'm getting the pattern, I'm getting the idea of how this goes. This is kind of the way it goes. For some of you, you're still going, I'm not getting it. Where are they coming up with this? What what rabbit are they pulling this out of the hat this time? I get it. Um, but again, the more we see the examples, the more we might start seeing the patterns. There's no specific set way of doing proofs. There are puzzles that need to be solved. Just like how you solve a jigsaw puzzle, you've learned the pattern might be for you to start by getting the outside of the puzzle, then finding small areas of the puzzle to work, and then working it out, but if each puzzle is a little different, same thing here. Start with our givens. That's a pattern. It's like starting with the outside edge of our puzzle. AB equals DE and BC equals CD. That's given. Now, I could say that then those segments are congruent. That's fine. Uh, it's not necessary here. It wouldn't be wrong to say segment AB congruent to segment DE, segment BC congruent to segment CD uh, by definition of congruent, it's just not necessary here. We don't need to have congruence yet, so it's not that saying it would be wrong, it would just be extra. And we're gonna to try to avoid the extra. Now, I can say that AB plus BC equals uh, BC plus DE. So what am I doing? I'm taking AB, and DE, I'm adding BC 
to both of them, aren't I? That's addition property of equality. We've added the same thing to both sides. Now we're going to do a substitution. The proof tells us that. Why? Because I don't want to know AB plus AB plus BC is fine. That gives me some. But I don't want BC plus DE. BC and DE doesn't help me. I want CD and DE. Fortunately, BC equals CD, so I can go AB plus BC, and I can change this BC to a CD plus DE by substitution property. That's great, but I can take small parts and put them together. AB plus BC is AC. And CD plus DE equals CE. That is segment addition. Taking two smaller segments, adding them together to get a bigger segment. Or taking a big segment and breaking into two smaller segments. That's segment addition. Angle addition does the same thing with angles. So if AB plus BC equals AC, I'm going to take this AB plus BC and rewrite it as an AC. I'm going to take this CD plus DE, same as is down here, and rewrite that as CE. That's my substitution. And now I'm going to take, go from equal measure to congruence using definition of congruence. And we've proven our theorem. In class today, we're going to definitely be working on more of these proofs. Again, do not panic. The major focus of the test coming up in a couple days is not proofs. There is a proof on there that is of the geometric variety. It is not terribly complicated. It's also not your whole grade. 90% or more of your points are coming from other types of problems. So if you're not getting proofs yet, it's okay. You can still get an A on this test. If you got, a, if you got everything else and you're just missing the proofs, you're still okay. We'll keep working. Uh, write a proof angle one is congruent to angle four. Proof angle two is congruent to angle three. This is really about the level of thing you're going to expect in a test. It's about the level of proof we're looking at. So what are we going to do? In any proof, where are we going to start? Are givens. Angle one is congruent to angle four. One given. Right there, you got some points in your proof on the test. Just write down the given. You got a point. You're not shut out. All right, now what do we know? What does the picture give us? The picture gives us angle one and angle two, and angle three and angle four are special pairs of angles, doesn't it? What kind of angles are they? Angle one and angle two are what? Vertical angles. And angle three and angle four are vertical angles. Notice I'm using the symbol here to shortcut just because I'm running out of space. What tells us that's true? I'd accept a couple different reasons here. Um, the easiest thing that I'm going to put this is given in picture. I'll write it that way. The picture shows us that. It's not written as a given, but it is in the picture as, a, as something that is there. I would also accept definition of vertical angles. As a reason, um, but really the picture is giving that to us, so given in picture I think is the easiest way. Now what do we know about vertical angles? Vertical angles are congruent, so angle one is congruent to angle two, angle three is congruent to angle four. Why? Because vertical angles 
angles are congruent. Or you could write vertical angles theorem. That is not the definition of vertical angles. Please be very careful. That is a theorem, not a definition. The best thing to do is to avoid confusion is just write out what it says. Vertical angles are congruent. One's congruent to two, two's, three's congruent to four, and one is congruent to four. You already have that up here. So I could change this angle one into an angle two by substitution. I could just change this angle four into an angle three by substitution. So instead of, so I could rewrite this statement, angle two is congruent to angle three by substitution. And that's what we're trying to prove. We're done. Sometimes when we finish a proof, we put these letters QED afterwards. Quickly and easily done. Let's people know you're done with the proof. So again, that's about the level of proof you can expect on the test. And I'd say it could probably get, even at a very basic understanding of proofs, even if you can't finish it right now, you should be able to, if it's a four point proof, you should be able to get a couple points out of that, at least by giving the givens and identifying the vertical angles in there somewhere. That'll probably get you about half the point. So again, don't panic about the proof thing on the test, even if you're not perfect with it yet. This is a process of puzzle solving. You will work on the technique. You will get better with it over time. Um, tomorrow night, make sure you are listening to review podcasts. We are going to have the review in class as well, but the review podcast is pretty important, um, especially if, the, if something's up and you might be absent. Uh, the review podcasts are very, very valuable. A lot of times people listen to them a couple times just to help prepare for the test. Remember, just listening is not going to prepare you for the test. You have to do work in order to be prepared. So make sure you're actually sitting down and working problems in preparation for the test. Math is not a spectator sport. You don't get better at basketball by going to watch people play basketball. You actually got to get in there and do it. Same with math. So we'll see you in class.